Okay. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming in. Happy Saturday. Um, my name is Carrie Drinkwine and I'm really excited to um, offer this class with my business partners and friends. Um, and we are just here really because we're all in such a global pandemic time where we are really unified in, in actually a really special way right now. Um, so if you want to give light to the fact that like kind of when it's it ever been in the history of our lives that we've been alive that across the globe, we're kind of all on exactly the same page. We're all experiencing the same thing. We're all, our routines are all pretty similar. So this is a time for us to really connect, to unite, um, and to support one another rather than to focus on isolation. And so what I've been seeing overall, and I think a lot of us has been seeing is there's a lot of fear. Um, and then there's a lot that comes in with this like social distancing, languaging and isolation. And there's a lot of trauma that's happening and that alone will bring down your immune system. So we want to come together and help empower you during this time and share our expertise on how you can not only support your immune health, um, but how you can control the internal environment of your body and the trajectory of your life moving forward after this moment. This is valid information for now and for forever. So with that said, I'm Carrie Drinkwine and all of us on this call, they're going to each person will introduce themselves as they start their topic. Um, but I am a regenerative detoxification specialist along with every other lady on this call, Mary, Rita, and Carrie. We are all detoxification specialists, um, have holistic nutrition backgrounds or certified nutritionists, clinical iridologists, clinical herbalism, abdominal therapy, massage, culinary expertise. So we just have a plethora of expertise and we are coming together to share that with you and to unite as one and to help you see that our biggest mission in life, um, at least mine, and I know these ladies as well, is to let people know that suffering is optional and that it's not something that we just become victim to. So really giving that light to people and that empowerment and then also that responsibility through the knowledge. So we're going to share a lot of information with you today and we hope you leave feeling really excited and full of tools. So with that said, um, <clears throat> I'm going to pull up my notes here. So we stay on track. Mm -hmm. And we have Carrie Tidwell starting, right? I'm just going through here. Sorry. Okay. Carrie Tidwell, are you wanting to start it off or you want me to get going? Yep. No, I can start it off. Okay. Do you have your notes? Yep. Yep, I'm all set. Perfect. Well, thanks, Carrie. And yeah, so grateful that you all took the time to be here and learn this information. Um, it wasn't until about five years ago that I learned what we're going to share here today, and it completely transformed my life and my health. And once I got this feeling and tr transformed my body and my health, I wanted to like share it with everybody. And so now is like the best time to come together to really get this information out there. And so five years ago, I thought I was eating healthy. I thought I was healthy. I was eating real whole foods. And I still had a lot of symptoms that were coming up that didn't make me feel my best self. Um, so I don't know if any of you can relate to when your alarm goes off in the morning, you just want to keep hitting snooze and you don't want to get out of bed because you're exhausted. No matter how early I went to bed, I was always really tired. And then when I would have to get out of bed, it would be really hard for me to stand up straight because um, I had really bad chronic back pain. And so every morning I couldn't like stand up straight and the shoulder wouldn't go down. And I just had a lot of, a lot of pain in my body on top of um, digestive stuff, skin stuff, dark circles under my eyes, um, constipation. So I don't know if any of you can relate to any of these symptoms throughout your life, but so these were my, this was my body's way of trying to communicate that something wasn't right. 
as I got older, I got adult allergies and I'd never grown up with allergies. So I thought this was weird. So I felt like in my twenties, I felt like I was 80. I was like, this is not normal. Why am I feeling this way? Something just didn't seem right. And when I went to the doctor, I got misdiagnosed and I knew I'd, I wasn't like deficient in a pharmaceutical or a pill. And I wanted to figure out what what I was eating was causing, something I was doing was causing this pain. And I had a lot of discomfort after I ate and bloating. And so I knew it had to have been the food. I just didn't know like what to eat. And I tried different diets and I would get to certain levels, but I still like never felt optimal until, um, like Carrie said, we all studied with Dr. Robert Morris and we learned regenerative healing through diet and lifestyle changes, which I'm going to get into the body's lymphatic system, but I just wanted to talk about like what is your body trying to say to you and communicate throughout the years and this can manifest different in everybody it can manifest as you know Crohn's with digestive stuff it could manifest as um, thyroid or adrenal everyone is different depending on you know what what you have going on in your body and so this is how it was manifesting in me and I always like to say listen to your body when it whispers so you don't have to hear it scream later and so I hope by the end of this talk that you can kind of look back in your life and be like, okay, my body was trying to speak to me in this way. And this is what I can do about it now. And so I really want to empower um, you all to take your health into your own hands and take it to your next best level, depending on no matter where you're coming from with your diet or lifestyle, we can all improve upon where we are. And so um, just like a car, uh, if you have a check engine light on a car, you don't want to ignore that because eventually your car will break down. So same thing with our body. It tries to speak to us and talk to us. And I like to use the example of allergies. Like a lot of people will say, oh, it's the ragweed or, oh, it's the dust or the pollen or this. But I want to invite you to think of it in a different way of that's the ragweed or the pollen telling you to look at, to clean out your internal terrain, your lymphatic system. And once that happens, then you won't have that response. And so um, just like constipation, you know, if we know we get backed up in the colon, we know something, we need to un unclog that. So same thing with our lymphatic system, which I'm going to get into. And so our lymphatic system is our body's main immune system. And that's, this system is just not talked about. And so I want to break this down simplistically for you so you can understand um, how you can keep this system working at its optimal best so that there's no blockages. And so when the system gets blocked, that's where congestion and things can bacteria and viruses can thrive. And so this whole thing with the coronavirus, we're seeing how people that have compromised immune systems and pre-existing conditions are the ones who are, you know, pa passing away or having a harder time or complications with it. And so if we were to take a lot of these pre-existing conditions and see the warning signs ahead of time, then we can prevent a lot of this stuff from happening to be a, a fatal event that doesn't need to happen if we would have just taken um, understood the body and taken it into our own hands and helped it in that way. So I'm going to talk about the lymphatic system. So our bodies are roughly comprised of 100 trillion cells and all the cells make up your kidneys, your endocrine glands, your organs, everything. And it's surrounded by two major fluids. You have your blood, which feeds your cells, which is about 25% and your lymphatic fluids, which is about 75% and that gets the waste out. So you have your blood that feeds your cells, your lymphatic waste or fluids gets your your lymphatic system gets the waste out and so most people know like i said the colon we have digestive waste so that gets backed up then our system gets, um, so our system okay um so most people know digestive waste our our colon can get backed up and we don't feel comfortable so same thing can happen in our bodies gigantic lymphatic system. So that is responsible for carrying all the metabolic waste out of the body. And so when that gets clogged, things can get backed up in our lymph system. And that doesn't allow for all the cells that make up our kidneys, our endocrine glands, our lungs, everything to function optimally. And so when things get backed up, that's when acids and toxins can sit on that tissue and damage that tissue further. And so, um, oh yeah, and inflammation can happen. And so if I'll just give a little quick chemistry course of so the acid alkaline balance. And so when too many toxins and acids are in the body and can't get out, that's when things break down. And so we can't avoid toxins. Um, they're in the environment, um, they're in our food, unfortunately. 
Um, and there's, you know, there's chemicals in our homes that we, that a lot of people use for cleaning supplies or, so it's really good to be aware of what we bring in our home and what we can control is the, what the food we eat, what we drink and what we breathe and put on our skin. And then our thoughts all make up the chemistry in our body. And so when too many acids are in this body and the lymphatic system is backed up, that's when things break down. And so um, acid versus alkaline. So zero to 14 is the acid alkaline balance chart and zero is super acidic. 14 is very alkaline. Our blood has to be in the middle. It has to be 7.4 pH. If it's above or below that, we wouldn't be here. And the body is so amazing at keeping us in balance because it will steal chemistry to neutralize itself. So if we're eating a high acidic diet, which a lot of people eat more on the acid side of chemistry, this was what I was eating when I thought I was eating healthy, um, eating real whole foods and thinking I was eating a healthy diet at that time. It was more on the acid side. So more like the eggs and meats and grains and sugars and processed foods are more on that side of that things. And so when we're eating predominantly that way and there's blockages, that's when things can break down and we can get congestion in the body. And so when things are congested, that's a breeding ground for a bacteria, parasite, um, virus to thrive. And so to keep this system fluid, we want to eat more on the alkaline side of chemistry, which is predominantly a lot of fruits and vegetables. And we want the high astringent properties of the fruits to help with the cleansing. So fruits are more of your cleansers and vegetables are more of your building material. But if you can take anything away from this talk, it's to add in more of the alkaline side of chemistry while eliminating um, the, the more acidic stuff that's more congesting. And there's certain foods that produce more mucus to um, induce congestion in the body and that's where things, our immune system can be, things can get, start to stick together and this is where cysts can form, tumors can form. And so if somebody's having skin problems, it's a sign we need to clean the lymphatic system. So nine times out of 10, it goes back to our body's lymphatic system, which is the system that causes damage to cells when too many acids that can't get out are in. And so um, a huge part of this is, is kidney filtration. And so our lymphatic system goes through the lymph nodes and dumps into the kidneys. If the kidneys aren't filtering out this metabolic waste, that's when things get backed up. And so a really easy tool to do this is you can pee in a jar at home in the morning and check to see if you see sediment in your urine. If you don't see sediment, then you know you wanna open up this eliminative channel um, through the lymphatic system. And there's a protocol to do this and we will be offering support on a guided cleanse that we will be doing. Um, you could you know, do this at home. Um, or try to check your kidney filtration at home, but just to know that we'll be offering support for a cleanse if that's something you're looking for. Uh, but otherwise, you could just start adding in fresh fruits and help astringe and cleanse that system. And so I like to say the first thing I do in the morning or when I am thirsty, the, one of the first things I'll have is lemon water. Um, you could do warm lemon water with ginger or whatever, but having the, the warm astringent uh, drink in the morning helps to inspire movement elimination for this channel so things aren't clogged because when what we don't eliminate we accumulate and so if we keep just eating healthy and not open up the doorways of elimination that things can still be stuck in our tissues and so a lot of times what we when I thought I was healthy it was like I had to get the waste out and then as I hydrated alkalized and cleansed at the same time and then things got back into a balance and I now, now don't wake up with that pain anymore. I don't want to hit snooze. I, my energy is back. Like all these symptoms that I was dealing with are all gone now. Just from diet and lifestyle change and doing these cleansing principles and understanding the body and bringing it into a balance. And so I'm yeah, just really grateful to share this information and to experience this on myself. Um, it's incredible the amount of healing reactions you can have as you take on this. And so uh, another thing to know as you start bringing in these alkalizing foods, you're going to want to get the mucus out. And so a lot of times we're taught to like stop the cold, stop the, stop the fever. And this is our body's way of trying to cleanse it out. And so when we get a cold and flu-like symptom, we don't want to stop it. We want to help the body. It's really just trying to get the waste out to go back into a balance. So we want to help expectorate this out. And so there's certain herbs that we use to help with this and teas and foods that help keep things flowing and fluid and help get this out so we don't keep congesting the body in our lymphatic system and our colons 
in a long, in the lungs and, in and, um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to share about that. Um, and a lot of times what we think is normal is not, com is, is not normal. It's just common. So it's not normal to have allergies. It's not normal to be constipated. It's just common because so many people have that. It's not normal to have your gallbladder removed. It's not normal to have your tonsils removed. It's just, we're trained to in condition to think that it is normal because it's, it's so common. And so if that is, if that has happened to you, it's just a sign that we just need to go back to nature, back to the balance, back to what we're designed to eat in the first place. And it is um, more on the alkaline side. And we can, we'll be getting, diving deeper into this in our guided cleanses, but just wanted to touch on that, what you can do right now at home and start bringing in these more hydrating, alkalizing foods, because when too many acids are in the body, that's what causes damage and dehydration. And another thing that happened, I could list a whole thing, a whole list of things that got better, but one, um, my hands used to be dried and cracked in my heels. That's all gone now. So you hydrate from the inside out and then your skin is glowing. Your hair is nicer, like everything just gets better. So when you're trying to heal one thing, it's like your whole body just gets more into a balance. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that and then I'll pass it along to Rita and thank you all for being here and yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. Um, that information changed my life. So thank you for sharing it in such a beautiful way. And I want to touch briefly on my own story of transformation through regenerative healing, just so everyone knows what is possible. Um, so when I was 19 years old, I was actually in um, a near death car accident. The doctors didn't think I was going to survive. Um, but I chose to live. I broke 16 bones. I injured a ton of internal organs and I wasn't supposed to be able to get back to any of my normal life activities such as sports or dance. Um, and I was expected to live in chronic pain forever. And so I was determined to find a solution and I went down just about every road and modality of healing from nutrition to um, body care to physical therapy, you name it to therapeutic yoga, which I grew up with therapeutic yoga and it really saved me and helped me, but I was still dealing with intense chronic pain. So um, I looked for years for solutions and I studied medical anthropology, everything I could find, and I could not overcome this chronic pain. And then finally, when I kind of hit the end where I was just like, I think I'm gonna have a breakdown. I didn't come to life to experience, um, to be in pain all the time. Like I really wanted to be able to share my gifts, do the things that I'm passionate about, um, be of service. And so at that point, I found Dr. Robert Morse's works, which is what Carrie so beautifully outlined. And I realized that I was dealing with this pain because my lymphatic system was so congested. And I also had um, genetic weaknesses that were all we all inherit and again those come from stem from that lymphatic congestion so as soon as i was able to start cleaning up my lymphatic system get my kidneys filtering i was able to fully get out of pain i was able to fully regenerate my bones my spine that i had broken off my organs um, and really start working on my own genetic weaknesses which were impacting that pain and inflammation such as adrenal health and such as parathyroid health for rebuilding the body and the connective tissue. So um, it took me 10 years to find a solution and I was doing so much for health and well-being that I thought I was doing everything. So this came as like a real gem and golden nugget to be like, wow, we can heal, we can regenerate. And it's as simple as cleaning up the waste, the cellular waste that's in our bodies. And that waste that Carrie was talking about, that lymphatic congestion gets passed down from multiple generations. Um, and that weakens the cells and the tissues. And then we start to see symptoms, whether it's asthma or cancers or, you know, foggy, foggy mental clarity, like just not being able to have clear thoughts. So it's it's really interesting that once we go inwards and start cleaning up then our bodies start to heal themselves and i think we're seeing that right now as far as um this this whole global situation goes with coronavirus is that we're seeing the impacts of how pollution affects our 
environment. And so if health really comes back to that lymphatic well-being in humans, same on the earth, as soon as we're starting to lower the levels of pollution that we're putting in um, through cars and planes and vehicles and pesticides, then we're starting to see the earth repair. We're starting to see all the animals come back out. We're starting to see the ozone slightly start to heal itself. So I really feel if we can be stewards of the ecology, our local ecology and find solutions in that way, that is going to produce greater health. And then if we can really be stewards of our own inner ecology, that also is going to create health. So um, after my regenerative healing journey, I found that I was getting to a point where I just was feeling depleted. Like I wasn't getting the nutrients that I needed. And though I was looking in the store, what does my body need? Like, I'm just feeling like I'm missing something. And so I didn't know what that was and I started to explore. Um, and I realized that it was micronutrients. So what I came across, my sister introduced me to an amazing company that has, that's grown, their food is grown in regenerative soils, which means that they're putting more nutrition into the soil than they're taking out of it. And as soon as I've tried that in three days all cravings went away i didn't want any sugars i didn't want any breads and i felt the most nourished i'd ever felt in my life and that's what really was clicked this light that was like wow our soils are obviously where our nutrients are coming from and right now what's on the shelves at the store is just like almost nutrient deficient almost nutrient void um, and that's for a couple of reasons first it's due to the fact that we're over using the soils, we're just planting and planting and planting um, on this huge industrial agriculture level um, of production and we're not taking the time to regenerate the soils. And the second thing that's happening is that the majority of the farming around the world is, is done by chemical agriculture, meaning we're spraying, this is crazy, we're spraying 300 million pounds of antibiotics into our soils every year um, in the form of glyphosate. And glyphosate is in Roundup. And Roundup just kills any pests um, that are eating the plants and that's going to affect production and our, you know, the ability to make an income as far as the industrial agriculture goes. But the reason that there's pests is that the soil is dead and depleted. And this glyphosate, which is an antibiotic, kills all of the fungus, the healthy fungus, the healthy bacteria that breaks down those nutrients, um, allowing the plants to absorb them and then allowing us to absorb them. And so that glyphosate is also water soluble. And so it's in our air, it's in our water, it's in 75% of the air we breathe and 75% of the, the rain that falls um, in agriculture states and most states are agriculture states. And so this is an antibiotic that's actually killing off our gut microbiome. And I know Carrie will talk more about that, but our gut microbiome is really responsible for our hormone health, our mood, um, our immune system, as well as our ability to absorb nutrients. And so it all goes hand in hand. So the first piece of my healing was learning, wow, I need to clean up my lymphatic system um, so that I can get out of pain. And that was a huge light bulb for me. And it takes everyone a different amount of time to actually get their kidneys filtering. And so that's a, a process that we love to walk people through and help them be successful in that. And then the second piece was really realizing that there was this huge level of depletion in my own body. Like I wasn't getting the nutrients that I needed from my foods and I eat all organic. I eat super healthy. I have my entire life. I've always grown a garden. Um, I've worked on permaculture farms and regenerative agriculture farms all throughout the world. So I've been blessed with an abundance of nutrients throughout my whole life. And yet I was still so depleted. And so it's really important that we understand how to truly nourish ourselves, um, understand the importance of our gut microbiome, repopulating those as, as we're exposed to things that kill them off on a daily basis. 
and also really taking care of our environment because that's where our health stems from. So I just wanted to introduce those, um, my healing journey and what's possible with self-regeneration. And I'm really excited to say um, now I have zero chronic pain. I do all the sports that I love. Um, I would never know that I had an injury. I would never know that I used to be completely limited in physical movement. And so I'm just grateful for this journey. And that's why it's all of our passions is we have our own um, application of it in our lives. And we love to help other people find more freedom, more health, and just more passion and zest for life. And I think once we all kind of taste the level of potential that's out there, so we can go from a level of not feeling good to a level of feeling good, to a level of feeling great, to a level of like, oh my God, I just want to help everyone. <laughs> so I think once we experience and taste that potential and we know what's possible, um, it can make a huge difference in the world, not only in our personal lives, but in our communities and in those around us. So thank you for listening and we love sharing this message. And I want to pass this off to my sister, Mary, who's going to explain more. Hi, everybody. Um, actually, Carrie, I would love to hear from you about the gut microbiome first, just so we can, since Rita just touched on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much. We just got a little out of order, but it's all good. Um, so I forgot to mention right away in the beginning, because I was so excited to <laughs> just get into this call, that really the reason for us coming together to do this, we explained, is one, we want to empower you. Um, and then the second reason we're doing this call now is we've been talking as a group and we help support people through transformations. We help support people and hold them as capable through transforming their patterns, transforming their behaviors, their habits, their what they're consuming, what they're eating. And that is like a big passion of ours for you not to be like, you know, you want change. You have the knowledge, but you don't know how to get there. And so the four of us have been working really hard to support hundreds of people over the last year transform their lives um, in a supported group format. So we do have a supported group format cleanse coming up on the 22nd. We'll talk more about that later. This call is still completely packed with knowledge that's going to benefit you, whether you join our cleanse or not. But we just wanted to be clear that we are offering a supported cleanse coming up with um, like basically the highest vibrational organic plant foods and healing herbs that we've ever found. And it's really, really an incredible format. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about my story as well. And then moving forward, just so you all know from here, we are probably going to meet once a month on a very specific topic because right now you're kind of getting an overload of a ton of information. And so all of that information is going to be, you know, like you're just going to be saturated in information. And so my goal and our goal is to really kind of get into the nitty gritty. So we'll be announcing as these move forward, they'll be capped at a hundred people when we do them and you will have to reserve your space. And we're going to get into um, things like talking about full and deep healing in the digestive system. Um, we'll have one week on just anxiety and depression, and one week just on autoimmune. Um, and it won't be weekly. We're going to do once a month or once every other month. So I just want to show the trajectory of where we're going from here. If you're wanting to continue to learn from us, uh, we're really excited to offer that. And then I'm going to share a little bit about my story. So uh, I used to have lupus and Hashimoto, two considered non-curable autoimmune diseases. And I was diagnosed with that when I was 30 years old. And I couldn't really understand how that was possible. And I did not grow up like some healthy you know, my parents ate organic, none of that. Like we all kind of grew up in like the chef boyer tea and have her helper and macaroni and cheese and all that stuff. And I remember as a child experiencing many things that I felt were not 
that were weird. Like I remember looking at my feet and being like, gosh, why are my toenails yellow and not understanding what that meant or having a distended abdomen and being really embarrassed as a woman in the world or as a young lady in the world. Like, why is my belly round and bloated? You know, I would wake up and it would be flat and then I would eat something and it would be super swollen and bloated and hard as a rock. And so I had been dealing with gut issues since a, since a young girl. And I was born with a reflux valve problem where the urine was going to my kidneys instead of out. And they didn't know that for like three years. So I was on antibiotics over and over and over and over and over. Like every month, a different strain, a different type of antibiotic until they finally figured it out. And then I was rushed to the Mayo Clinic and um, a corrective surgery was performed. And that corrective surgery was done incorrectly and my body sprung a leak. And so my abdomen filled with urine which as we've been talking about is our toxic waste system. So when that happened, that really traumatized my internal organs even more. And then I was like tranquilized with the highest level of antibiotics that they could find in order to, it's basically underneath the level of chemotherapy at that point to save my life. And so my mom just didn't think this was important information. <laughs> I had like, no, I, you know, I was three. So she was like, yeah, but they fixed it, you know, like moved on, fixed it. It's, you know, and then we just kind of trust in that space that our doctors cure us. And so I just want to bring light to that. Like our doctors are incredible and they are just trained differently. They're trained to diagnose and they're trained to prescribe and they're doing a great job at that. And so what we do as Carrie and Mary and Rita is we help um, prevent disease in the body. And so um, I share that because people are like, well, how did you get lupus? Well, I think it was that way I started my life with tons of antibiotics, no gut flora, um, no healthy bacteria, lots of chemicals and pesticides being introduced in my body. And then growing up on a poor diet made me super sensitive. So I was diagnosed with celiac disease. Then I was diagnosed with low thyroid. And I had been going to the doctor for years and not understanding. I kept saying, well, like everything looks everything looks good. Everything looks normal. And that's because in the allopathic world, we test the blood. So we always test the blood and we don't ever test the lymph. And as Carrie explained, your blood feeds your glands and your organs, your lymph cleans your glands and your organs. The lymph's job is to keep everything out of the blood system. So by the time something makes it into the blood, it's been present for a long time in your body. And the symptoms have been present for a long time. So you're going to the doctor saying, I have anxiety. I've never had anxiety before. I'm so tired. I can't keep my head up. That's never happened to me before. I was blacking out, like could not like walk my kids to the park. I would just black out. Um, really poor quality of life. Like these are all signs that I was having. And the doctors kept telling me that nothing was wrong with me. And so eventually it got to the level where I was so swollen everywhere. I'd put on 35 pounds. I was a plant-based eater, but like, I'm going to show you a little chart. Like I thought a healthy plant-based eater, but what I was eating was not alkaline. It was acidic. Um, and my kidneys weren't filtering waste out. So the way my body was handling the waste was by buffering with inflammation, with water, with fat, with cholesterol, with calcium. And so I just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I couldn't barely get out of bed. I couldn't walk. I had vertigo, terrible. I had insomnia. Um, it was really bad. And so then I went in and said, somebody has to help me. Please, somebody has to help me. There's something wrong with me. I can't take care of my kids. And I was treated like I was crazy. And then finally they did more blood work. And they were like, oh, well, you have lupus and you have Hashimoto and you have chronic adrenal fatigue and you have fibromyalgia. So I was diagnosed with four autoimmune diseases in like one day. And then she just really spent like a matter of minutes with me and was like, okay, you're going to take steroids, progesterone, you're going to take levothyroxine you're gonna, and just handed me like a basket of drugs basically. And I was like, what? Like, and I, I remember asking her, how did this happen? How, how does this happen to somebody? And she said, well, we don't know. It just does, but it doesn't change and you can't cure it. So the only thing you can do is take these drugs and live a relatively normal, but abbreviated life. Very cold. And I was like, how, I just couldn't even wrap my head around it. I had tears in my eyes and I was like, I can heal this. And she was like, well, it's not possible. So there was no encouragement, no advice in the health side. And I just knew that there had to be more. 
And so I got in my car and after sobbing my eyes out, and then I went home and told my husband, I have four autoimmune (laughs) diseases that I was just diagnosed with. So at least I know what's wrong with me. It just started not sitting with me. I was like, this isn't the rest of my life. This isn't possible. There has to be a way to heal. And I started really working with naturopaths and working with endocrinologists, rheumatologists, hormone therapists, you name it, I did it, Western and Eastern. And that's when I met Carrie Tidwell actually. And Carrie was my detoxification specialist and she was my final straw. I was in a really dark place. I didn't want to be here anymore. Um, That always makes me tear up and I don't share that often. So just give me a second. So yeah, so I'm really grateful for you, Carrie. And I think that the fact that we can get into that level of suffering where we don't wanna be here anymore, or we don't know how to live, or we can't live like this, is unacceptable, especially when you can heal it through what you consume. And so I listened to Carrie and I was in between desperate and skeptical. And I was like, well, what do you got? You know, and I was like, oh, I have nothing to lose. So I jumped all in and I started working with her and I was like beyond blown away beyond like kind of mad like what it was this easy the whole time why didn't anybody tell me this and my my undergrad is in dietetics and nutrition science and my master's is in holistic nutrition i have a fancy little decor that means nothing (laughs) because even with those degrees i was sick and so i stopped practicing as a nutritionist because i was like if i'm sick my advice could be making other people sick. So it really was very humbling. I went back to waitressing and trying to make ends meet and um, just really kind of took my ego and just knocked (laughs) knocked it out. And so I just kept working on my own personal health. And then I went to school where Carrie went to school. And then now I'm sitting here in a holistic clinic that I cooperate and I help hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people heal um, all over from, you know, all over the world and locally. And I just feel so incredibly grateful for this knowledge. So if you guys really plug into this information and know it as truth, your life will change as soon as you decide you want it to change. And that is the the biggest key is making that choice and making that choice to, to choose non-harm for yourself. And so we're going to give you the rest of the information here on gut health. Sorry, I got a little teary there. It's just really intense for me to look back at how, how tough my life was and like how beautiful my life is now. And it was because of one person. And so the, that is where our hearts come from is we transformed our lives. We transformed all the people's lives around us. We transform our family's lives we tra- and it just keeps rippling out. So each one of you can take this knowledge and change at least a hundred people's lives, which is really, really powerful. And so um, I couldn't be more grateful for where I am today. And I have just dove in really, really deep into this world. And so um, I wanna talk to you about um, taking a peek really quick at the acid and alkaline chart. I have it on the screen, so I'm gonna have you look at that. So like Carrie was saying, your body's joins of cells into fluids, blood and lymph, your blood feeds, your lymph cleans, your lymph brings the waste to your kidneys, your kidneys pee it out through the urine. If you're not filtering through the urine, your waste is staying in your system. And that's the problem. So that's why we got to get the lymph draining. And if you're eating acids, your body is buffering with either water, fat, calcium, or cholesterol. And, um, and that is being stolen from your connective tissue system or building in your body. So fat is just where all the toxins are tucked in, tucked in and stored. And so when we're gaining weight, we're gaining toxicity. And that's a a body's warning sign saying like, hey, the toxin levels are too high. I actually can't let go of this fat. And it's why it has nothing to do with caloric intake. And a lot of people will focus on cutting their calories and you'll lose a little bit of weight. We don't focus on cutting calories at all. We eat as much as we want. I eat a lot. I just had three mangoes and a crate of blueberries, you guys. (laughs) So talk about fructose energy. Um, But we eat as much as we need to. We don't watch calories, but we eat alkaline foods that heal and hydrate your body. And so that's understanding the chemistry. 
Acidity dehydrates and destroys tissues and cells, and alkalinity hydrates, heals, and cleans your cells. And that's really the most powerful thing to understand if you want to make it as simple as possible. Alkaline heals, acid destroys, the end. So I'm going to share my screen with you really fast, and we're just going to take a brief peek at this chart, and you don't have to share it if you want to share in the chat a word acid, middle, or alkaline, you can just kind of, you can if you want to. And I will tell you that I was on that acid side of the fence and I thought I was a healthy eater. Carrie was on that acid side of the fence and she thought she was a healthy eater. And so you'll be surprised at some of these. And so how this is figured out is that when food is burned down in a lab, like basically, or in your body, everything leaves behind an ash. And it's either an alkaline ash or an acid ash. And so they can test this in a lab by what's called a PRAL score, a P-R-A-L score. If you wanna get technical and look it up, you'll find lots of info on it. Um, but this score shows us the acidity of the food. And so it goes one through seven on this chart. This is not all foods, it's just an example of the ones that they've tested. So I'm gonna share this with you and you can take a peek and then you can just check out where is my diet. So can everybody see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so over here, refined salt, sugar, coffee, turkey, pork, beef, chicken, fish, pasta, bread, tobacco, sodas, and then worry, hate, anger, envy, gossip, fear, cosmetics, trauma, and then exercise and sunlight are in italics, which means in excess. We know if we stay in the sun for eight hours, we're gonna burn. We know if we work out to the point of building lactic acid in our body, that that has become an acid forming activity. So looking at this, and I want you to understand just a little bit about this side. So these pHs of one are the same pH as battery acid. And we wouldn't drink battery acid, but we drink coffee every day. We say like, oh, I would never drink bleach or battery acid, but I eat bread every day. It's the same pH. Your body doesn't know the difference of chemistry. So the chemistry pH is the same. The chemicals are a little different, of course. When you get into the twos, you get into eggs and nuts and cheeses and pastas and oatmeals and beer and wine. And so dairy is really hard for people. I know it's really delicious and super addictive, but it is one of the highest mucus forming foods and highest acids that you can consume. Um, and then you get, you kind of start to move up. So most nuts are actually more on the acidic side. Um, but then you just start seeing the greens and the blues and the purples. And so when we're detoxing, we kind of eat over here all of us have a balance in our life. So we'll talk about that balance, 80-20 balance. Um, but really, if you look at this, like lemons, watermelons, cantaloupe, mangoes, melons, papaya, kelp, parsley, wheatgrass, cayenne, berries, dates, figs, etc., are your most alkaline foods. So fruits are actually more alkaline than vegetables and they are your cleaners. So fruits are your cleaners and veggies are your builders. And so they're both important in your life. And then that ties into eating right for your species type. So this information, the reason why it's relevant to you is because you're a human. So if you weren't a human, this call would not be relevant to you. So the reason is, is you've all heard about um, eating right for your blood type probably, but it's really about eating right for your species type. And that's where my curiosity came from when I was super sick. And I said to my husband, I remember sitting there packaging hundreds and hundreds of pills. I was working with a naturopath and I was on like almost a thousand dollars a month in supplements. It was crazy. And I just said to him, I was like this, I was like, there's gotta be more to this. Um, citruses are the highest alkalinity. Yeah, citrus, lemon, lime, oranges, are, it's just not all foods are listed there, Terry. Um, but I just thought like there has to be more to this. Like, and you start, if you start studying animals, you will start to see that animals do not suffer with chronic disease, only humans and house animals do. So we really have to look deeper at that. I mean, and now in the areas, if they're being sprayed or exposed to chemicals, you're seeing stuff where like when we have genetically modified grains and we have cows eating them, we're starting to see variations now. But generally speaking, an animal eats right for their species type. The cow doesn't cook the grass, it just eats the grass, right? 
Um, they aren't eating processed foods. They aren't changing up what they eat. And so then I started really digging into like species type eating and the humans are primates. And so primates, um, someone can answer that in the chat. I'm just going to keep rolling. But primates are basically a frugivore species. So apes and humans are primates. That's our scientific species type. And that means that our internal anatomy and physiology, as well as our saliva, bacteria, enzymes, everything that we contain um, is designed to break down fruits, berries, melons, vegetables, avocados, nuts, and seeds, and small amounts of heirloom seeds and grains. So our bodies, that's like how we're set up. And we know that by our digestive enzymes. And so I want to open one more chart for you to help explain this. If you guys, if I have a moment, I'll try to be really quick. Um, let me just see here. And um, Rita, you can pop in and answer that question on tomatoes while I'm pulling up the chart if you want. Yeah, so tomatoes, when we cook them, it changes the chemistry of them. And so eating them raw, they're very juicy, um, they're alkalizing, they're hydrating to all of the cells. Um, they're actually, they have like lycopene in them, which is great um, anti-cancer. But then when we cook them down, the chemistry actually changes and it turns into highly acidic. So then again, we're going more into that dehydration state that acid state, which again affects the health of the cells because you're putting that acid on the actual tissues of the body, which then start to break them down. So um, it's best to just eat them raw. And then the yogurt itself is mucus forming, meaning that it's really congesting in the tissues. And when those tissues get congested, that's where we see suppressed health. So like congested tissues in your thyroid, just as lymphatic congestion on the thyroid, is suppressed thyroid function, which turns out to be express itself in hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So that's just an example of what happens when the tissues get congested. Yes. Those alkaline okay. foods are what really clean those tissues. Thank you, Rita. Yeah, and we'll get into a little Q&A in just a moment. So if you just let, take a quick gander at this species chart, I'm gonna share my screen with you and you'll just see the physiological differences in our body. So I'm gonna share my screen one more time and here we are. So there's a carnivore, an omnivore, an herbivore, a frugivore, and a human. And without me reading anything below, you can see the differences. We don't have canines, we don't have fangs. Um, our teeth are completely different. They're the closest to the apes. Um, we have a very alkaline saliva and we have a really, and carnivores have a very acidic saliva. They have hundreds um, times more hydrochloric acid in their gut than we do. We have very, very low hydrochloric acid in our gut. So just taking a peek at this chart is really all I wanted to do. I'm happy to share that. Um, in a fa the Facebook group or somewhere that we had posted this event. And so you can kind of read more on that. So basically that's, I'm gonna go into digestion as quickly as possible and let Mary wrap it up. But digestion starts in your mouth. And so our mouth is alkaline as a primate. Our saliva has enzymes called pitalin and tylin. I won't get too deep into that. But those enzymes naturally break down glucose, fructose, and galactose. So fruits, vegetables, and mom's milk sugar. We are set up for it in our mouth. It's just natural. So at birth, we can actually um, digest and break down those items right away. And then as we get teeth, then we start producing compounds like called tylen, which makes us break down grains and more complex starches, et cetera. So as we eat, chewing is super important. Chew your food. So as you know, if we don't have the enzymes, we don't have an acid-based saliva like a carnivore. So if we're chewing a meat-based item, we're not breaking it down on an enzymatic level in our mouth. We're just making it smaller pieces. And that's all that's happening. And then it goes into the esophagus and it goes into the duodenum, which is a holding tank. So a lot of people think all of our digestion happens in the stomach, but it actually happens via the pancreas. So the pancreas is responsible for secreting all of the enzymes, insulin, amylase to further break down our food. 
So if we're eating lots of heavy proteins, lots of heavy grains, lots of heavy mucus forming foods, the pancreas is working extremely hard. And we'll get deeper into this on our, our guided cleanse, but signs that your pancreas might be overworked, undigested food in the stools, moles on your body, all these things that are related to pancreatic health. Um, but that's what happens there. And then after the food has broken down on an enzymatic level, it goes into your stomach. And this is the point, like the golden key to your immune health is understanding that your gut is responsible for your brain health. Your gut is responsible for your memory, your cognition, like that librarian that's looking for a word or a person or a memory. That's your gut health. Your gut is responsible for whether you have joy, whether you have anxiety, whether you have depression, how you show up in the world, whether you have a strong immune system or a weak immune system. And that is all related to our gut health. And the reason is, is because your gut is designed to have what's called hydrochloric acid in it. This is the one space in our body that should be acidic. It should be a 2.4 pH. And so we want that to stay that way because it has burning up bacteria and viruses and enzymes, things that come in. So like I touch a doorknob, there's lots of bacteria everywhere, you guys. We can't walk around in fear of bacteria. What we need to do is empower ourselves to have good gut health that can handle the bacteria. So if I touch a doorknob and it's got some harmful bacteria on it, and then I forget to wash my hands right away, and then I eat an apple, it's in my mouth, right? So then it goes into my gut, and my gut's job is to kill it off. And if I have a healthy gut biome, it will. It'll just burn it right up. No problem. I might feel like a little like, oh, my stomach feels a little weird for a couple minutes, and then it goes away. And that's a good, strong gut. And that is where, you know, like if you go out with, I said, it made this example last week, if you go out with your partner and, or your friend and you guys have the same meal and one of you gets food poisoning and one of you doesn't, and you're confused, you're like, how, how could it be food poisoning if we ate the same thing, but it's very clearly food poisoning. And it's because they might've been exposed to the same bacteria, but their gut handles it and yours didn't. And so that's the first defense line that we have is our gut health in fighting bacteria and parasites and microbes. So we have a lining in our stomach that's like two inches and it's full of hydrochloric acid and ALA, alpha lipoic acid. You don't need to know those details. Um, but that, those, that mucous membrane and that acid lining is what's responsible for removing bacteria, parasites, metals, uh, harmful things like um, antibiotics, like Rita was talking about glyphosate they were interest, introduced to. That's our body's job to remove that stuff. And over this constant um, acid forming food diet, we deplete our gut biome. And that's really what we want to teach you is that when we drink the acid, when we drink the battery acid or the coffee or the refined sugar or the gluten, you know, these are the items, the top items that deplete your gut health are pharmaceuticals. So antibiotics, which we know if you're not eating hundred percent organic, you're getting it in your body. If you're drinking tap water, you're getting it in your body. If you're breathing air, you're getting it in your body. Unfortunately, right now that 300 million pounds of, of glyphosate sprayed all over everything it wipes out our gut biome. We just can't keep up. Coffee, refined sugar, um, and then gluten and dairy are the hardest things on your gut. And they actually start to tear holes in the gut lining. So you'll hear of people being diagnosed with what's called leaky gut, um, celiac disease, all of these different um, Crohn's, IBS, all of these are just simple signs that the gut flora has completely broken down and the lining is thinning due to the constant exposure of these foods. And so you can actually heal and rebuild that. And we work, Carrie and Mary and Rita, we all work with herbs that rebuild that and restore it. So you aren't taking a supplement for life, you're healing the problem and moving forward which is what we like to do. We work in root cause. So it's not like, well, this is just how it is forever. When you actually get your body into a really healthy state, can you have a cup of coffee here and there? Of course. You know, do we recommend it? No, because it's not good for you, but can you? Yes. Um, and so you really want to get to a place of regenerating your gut health, regenerating your body, getting into good immune function, and then finding balance and choosing to eat mostly alkaline with a little of your favorites on the side. And so moving further from that, the other thing to understand is that in our transverse colon is where all our neurotransmitters are. And so they communicate with our brain. They are what sends messages. So if there's congestion and mucus and plaque and buildup in the gut, 
you will have really foggy thinking like, what did I come in this room for? What was I trying to say? Words stumbling, um, things coming out of your mouth weird. Like, how did I say that that way? And it's really just like a jumbled mess of the gut health. And so we really want to focus on really healthy gut and colon health because your hormones are made in your gut. 80% of um, your epinephrine, your norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, all of that is produced in the gut. And then the signals are sent to the brain. And so I always like to say it's not Wi-Fi. Like it doesn't just zap it to the brain. We actually have to transport these messages in our body. And if there's blockages and inflammation and mucus from all of these acid and mucus forming foods, our signals and our receptors are going to be inhibited. So I hope that's helpful and makes sense to you guys um, and not too deep um, of information. But yeah, so that was my, my main passion. I'm going to pass it over to Mary because she's going to talk about how we work um, and kind of summarizing immune function. So if you have a healthy immune system, if you have a strong gut flora, if you have an alkaline body, oh, that was the last thing I wanted to share. Um, if you have an alkaline system, viruses actually can't survive in alkalinity. And so I'm just going to, um, we'll share this last document with you. Um, let me just one second here. And it's just about quickly about viruses and Mary's going to um, summarize this up. Here's the screen share. Okay. Let me just one more time share that. And I'll let Mary talk about this chart and sharing this with you. Here it is. Okay. So th this is just viruses. They're, they're, they're microscopic parasites, generally much smaller than bacteria, and they lack the capacity to thrive and reproduce outside of a host. So outside of our body, they can't live and they, they can live for like a little bit. Like we know it's like 10 hours, two days, maybe a week, but they do die. And so we have to have an acidic internal environment for them to survive in our body. So if you are, you know, if you're alkaline and your body's healthy and your immune cells are healthy and you get introduced to coronavirus or any virus, doesn't matter, your body's going to just fight it right off and it will die because your body's alkaline. And so this just talks about disease can't survive in an alkaline state. However, it's an acidic and low oxygen pH that um, allows viruses, bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus to all thrive. And then the definition of disease is the, the original word disease was dis-ease, which is to not be at ease and at harmony. And most, it just talks about medical pr practitioners um, forget that that's the original definition is dis-ease. We will be sharing the recording. So um, just understanding that the, the way that we get into a dis-ease state in our body is through lowering our pH because all 100 trillion of your cells survive off of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that is the most brutal, it's like the basic Krebs cycle that you learn in, in high school, but basically oxygen and carbon create ATP. And how that's created is a glucose molecule or a fructose molecule attaches to a piece of oxygen. So a fruit or a vegetable attaches to oxygen and becomes ATP and that's energy. And when we don't have energy in our cells, they become weak and they become friendly for parasites and microbes and viruses. So I hope that's helpful. I'm gonna pass it over to Mary Beth. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I just wanna take a moment to honor all of you guys for sharing your story because it's not easy to get so vulnerable. And I think it's amazing what we're witnessing here. And, and it's, it's also been a big struggle to get through and to this point. So I just want to take a moment to like honor you three. And I'm really glad that Carrie brought up the point of cellular regeneration, because from all these stories and what we're learning, what I take the most out of it is that your cells can regenerate. And that is basic how, basically how my story started. When I was a kid, I suffered from a lot of lymphatic congestion. I didn't know that's what it was at the time. Um, I had eaten what I thought was healthy. I decided to be a vegetarian at eight, but I was consuming primarily dairy products. Um, I was a cheeseaholic. I was one of those people that didn't think you could live without cheese. Like 
It is a staple. <laughs> you cannot live without it. <laughs> um, but because of that, I got a lot of lymphatic congestion and I had chronic tonsillitis all the time. And I ended up having to get my tonsils taken out. But um, had I known what I know now, I probably could have avoided that. But, you know, it is just part of the journey. Um, and then I also uh, suffered from weakened kidneys because my lymphatic system was so congested, the waste was clogging up my kidneys. And so I started this journey just like, I just kind of thought that this was a normal, like Carrie was talking about. We think it's normal, but it's not normal. It's just common, right? Um, and then as I got older, my mom went through some of her own health conditions and we really got pushed down this path of cellular regeneration. And my passion in this work is really for the next generation. Um, through this work of iris analysis and looking at our blood on the screen, I've been able to see that my the genetic weaknesses that have been passed down from my mother and grandparents, I've actually been able to change over time just by the foods I've been consuming. And so this is a study called epigenetics, um, how certain genes can be turned on and off given what we're putting into our body. And this to me is the most fascinating. So I have two kids and my kind of like biggest goal and passion is to be able to pass on stronger genetic makeup to them than I have. And if, if you know, you can see in the past 30 years how as a species we've been weakening our genetic system and, and you can see that with the increased amount of um, allergies and cancers and autoimmune and uh, you know, the whole list of diabetes, obesity, our genes are becoming and our cells is basically what I'm saying is are becoming weakened. And so we're less able to fight off these diseases. But something I took from all three of these ladies stories is that given the right environment, the body can neutralize itself. The body can come back to health. The body wants to be healthy. It just needs the right alkaline environment. So in protecting and supporting your immune system, um, there's basically two types of immune cells. One are inherited immune cells that you do get passed down from your family lineage. And another one are our learning, our learned immune cells. And they're basically learning how to be strong or weak given the environment. So if we're um, eating a very acidic diet, our immune system, our immune cells are going to get squished together and they're not going to be as healthy and as vibrant as they can be. So uh, if you've ever seen... Um, I would encourage checking out blood analysis. You can probably Google it, but you can actually look at pictures of your immune cells and they look like angels. They're like angelic, these white angelic cells living in your body. And when I think of angelic, I think of alkaline, I think of hydrating, I think of oxygenated. So that's exactly the environment that our angelic immune cells need to live in is this hydrating, um, alkaline, um, electrifying environment versus this acidic, lethargic, angry, hot environment. So there's two sides, the acidic and the alkaline. So in supporting your immune system and your cellular health, basically that's what it comes down to, is I think about three main concepts, and that is to alkalize, detoxify, and nourish. You first have to alkalize the environment through everything we've been talking about. Um, and you can also, you know, deep breathing, spring water, um, something that you can really do just at home is grow your own sprouts. It's a really fun, easy process. Sprouts are some of the raw sprouts or some of the most alkalizing things you can eat. Microgreens, you can do that in your window. Um, some of the most alkalizing things you can eat. So you first alkalize the environment. And then from there, you want to detoxify any of the waste that hasn't been able to get out of the body that's been stuck in the lymphatic system. So oftentimes, given our environment and given the pollutants and all of these things that we've been exposed to, we need some help with the detoxification process. And that's what we do is we just help people with that detoxification process. And that includes the introduction of these, you know, regenerative foods, um, herbs, things that are going to aid the lymphatic system to move. Some other simple tools you can do to just help yourself detoxify on a daily basis is hot and cold showers really stimulate the immune system and help to detoxify Dry brushing helps to detoxify, um, deep breathing, you know, um, oxygen into the body. You see these oxygen bars, a lot of people are getting into them for various reasons, but really it's just to oxygenate the cells and help to detoxify. And then lastly is to nourish. So once you've created a great a, a, an environment, 
you detoxify the waste, and now you want to consume nourishing energy to help those cells thrive and help them become stronger, ultimately, for passing them down to the next generation. So this talks again about, you know, these rich whole foods. And a lot of people were asking about the difference between raw and cooked. And there is evidence that, you know, when you cook foods, it changes the chemistry of the food. So it actually depletes the food of a lot of its nutrients, like amino acids, it breaks them down. Um, it changes the genetic makeup of the food more or less. And one, one thing that for our immune system particularly, is when we eat a lot of cooked food, it actually sends so much blood to the digestive system that about our immune cells actually like 80% of our immune cells go straight to the digestive system to try to fight off or just aid in this digestive process. And it basically leaves the rest of the body kind of out there. Yeah, right. So raw foods can be really an amazing addition into your diet. You don't have to be 100% raw, um, you know, but just adding in more raw, more alkalizing, that's the, that's the trick. And as you start to ingest more alkalizing foods, you'll see that you, your, your life will actually start to move in a more alkaline manner. And that's really the, the aha moment I've had with this journey is how much my life has shifted on an emotional level and a mental level. And I'm noticing like my entire life is more alkaline. The people I'm inviting into my life are more alkaline, more happy, more joyful, living their passions. The, the community I surround myself with is, is more alkaline. It's, um, it's, it's, it's like angelic <laughs> if you're getting my vibe. So it really does your cellular, uh, you can change your life on a cellular level and it can trickle out into many areas of your life. So th that's what I wanted to talk about is just these three concepts of alkalize, detoxify, and nourish. And we've mentioned a few times that we're doing a 30-day supported cleanse, and that is what we're doing. We're, we are supporting people on a daily basis to help with this process of learning how to ingest alkaline foods, learning how to create an alkaline environment in your life, learning how to detoxify these chemicals and pesticides and acids out of the body so the body can really start to heal. And then again, nourishing with 100% organic, non-GMO, um, super nutrient rich, micronutrient rich superfoods. So we lead you through this like 30 day protocol of doing that. Um, and then hopefully it, it leads to you being able to do this on your own in a manner of a long-term longevity lifestyle. And then hopefully you can pass that on as well to your next generation and beyond. So my vision for this work is big. It's like, let's help the seven generations to come and let's start on a cellular level with ourselves. So um, I know we're kind of at the top of the hour, but um, thank you guys for coming to this class. And I'm, I'm really excited. We're gonna open it up a little bit for some questions, just a few minutes if anyone has questions or you wanna learn more about our 30 day programs we do. Um, and yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mary. Awesome. Yeah, we'll open it up right now. I just wanted to summarize. So if anybody is looking to join us on our transformation, just so you know, the quality of what we're using is like, read or like Mary Beth said is 100% organic. And it actually, um, one of the products that we work with as scientifically proven and tested third party tested to remove 75% of the glyphosate out of your body in six weeks. So we're using really potent and powerful things to re-nourish and alkalize and support your tissues and cells and make your transition to eating healthier a lot easier. And then we're removing the poison, removing the plaque, the waste, the glyphosate out of your body, removing excess candida, bacteria, and fungus through herbs. And this is all supplied for you. And so we'll just be super transparent. If you, the cleanse is starting April 22nd. Um, I do have some kits in stock for those that are in Minneapolis. If you're worried about getting it on time, but we are going, I built a private group, a support group, and you will be like just doused in um, love, support, and education and a live weekly Zoom, which will only be Q&A. It won't be us presenting. It will be you coming to us with our questions and us answering with our expertise. So you're getting four complimentary nutritionists and detox specialists for a month, um, along with a, a beautiful lifestyle change. So if that's interesting to you, please chat with us. We'll send whoever brought you to this class has a code to give you a discount on that. Um, and I'll just be super 
super transparent. Normally it's 419 for 30 days. It's only 314 with whoever brought you to this class. It's 314 with their gift code. So it's like 10, 11 bucks a day and it has all your superfoods, all your herbs, all your sleep um, apothecary and aminos and supportive amino acids that support your muscle structure, et cetera. So it's really, really incredible. Um, so we hope to have you there. There's a lot of us so far and we're really excited to just support you in this transformation. So we wanna open it up for a few minutes for those of you that have the time and have deeper questions. So you can just unmute yourself at any time and ask a question. I know there were some questions in the chat, so feel free to pop in anyone. Hi, Carrie. Can you hear me? Um, it's really faint, but maybe you turn up. Oh, yeah. How's that? That's How's better. That? Who are we hearing from? Mary. Hi, Mary. Are you on camera? Yes. Okay, let me try to find you. I see you. I'm on camera. Do you see her? Go ahead, Mary. Thank yep, you. go ahead. So, just I came in late. <laughs> I just got here, so I probably missed something um, I should have heard. But, um, so you're going to do a detox. You're starting at April 29th, 22nd, 22nd, and there's a code that I got with my invitation that I can can use for that. If, and so how this private group, so um, will, will there be a, a scheduled meeting with this group then every week? Yes. yes. We're going to have a scheduled weekly Zoom. It looks like it's going to be Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Central. Um, we'll confirm that. Everyone will be invited into this private forum. It's not on social media. It's um, a, called Transformation Support Group. The invite will come from transformationsupportgroup.net and it's led by the four of us. It's really to protect your privacy. And then the calls weekly will be through my Zoom channel and we'll all come together on Zoom and ask any questions and answer any questions and really help keep each other motivated. And the private support group is packed with information from your schedule to recipe books that we've written that are being provided for you complimentary. Um, to grocery lists by Rita and beautiful how to make popsicles and smoothies and just like really incredible stuff. Videos on detox support if you're pregnant or nursing and how to cleanse um, responsibly during that. And yeah, just everything that you could think of is in there for support. That sounds really great. Um, that's, that's probably what I'm looking for. <laughs> great. Uh, that's where it falls apart for most everybody, right? with um you know it's like how to uh troubleshoot how to get yourself uh support motivation to be able to do it again another day mm -hmm. yes so much and i think that it's it is hard to be on your own and to feel like we're kind of in isolation right now um, it's really difficult to just like be on your own in your kitchen and am I eating the right thing? Is this normal? Is this? So we just want to make it easy and supportive and as community as possible because we really do need to unite together during this time. Great. Um, one of the things that I've had a long problem with <clears throat> is in trying to do many different nutritional upgrades over the years is, um, you know, like getting my kitchen together and getting my grocery list together uh, so that I'm ready for mm -hmm. something because by the time I'm 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 maybe in a cleanse I'm like uh oh <laughs> I don't have the stuff I need is there some sort of um, scheduling for that as this moves through Yes, so we have all the grocery lists up there and I will provide a little list. I'll get that up this afternoon. I get out of the clinic at like four. So um, I'll get it up this afternoon on like my favorite kitchen tools that I use okay, to be successful. Would... And they'll have links to purchase on Amazon. We always try to find the most affordable. That would be great. I'm actually planning to do a video on that to send today. So Perfect. yeah. And then I was also going to share too, um, just lost my train of thought here. 
Uh, oh, um, no matter what diet or lifestyle you're coming from, we meet you where you're at. And so don't feel intimidated like you have to eat 100% alkaline tomorrow or anything like that. Um, it's just meeting you where you're at and taking it to your next best level at a pace that feels comfortable for you. And so in a supportive way, it's really helpful to have that support so we can kind of guide you in a safe way because sometimes it, you can go too fast. And so there's really an art to it. Yeah. I went too fast the last time I did it and it didn't go so good. <laughs> I had an out of body experience trying to find a vegan cookbook at Barnes and Noble. So, uh, and, it, and it never happened, you know, cause I, I needed to have more support and structure uh, at that time. And um, so I'm, I'm, ex I'm kind of excited to try again, uh, but I just want to make sure that I, yeah, that I, that I'm having that this time. Cause who needs to have another, you know? Yeah, we've got you, Mary. <laughs> you got me? All right, I feel it. Anybody else feel brave enough to ask some birding questions? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Great. It's Michelle. Hi, good morning, everybody. So um, I have two questions. One is just about nightshades in general. Um, I know tomatoes are nightshades. And so um, I was wondering if cooking any nightshade changes the property and maybe that's why nightshades are considered allergens or even raw. And then my second question is, and I'm, I'm hoping to pop on a call with Mary Beth and, and Dana um, later this afternoon with my girlfriend who's totally ready to do this with us, but she has an extreme cherry allergy. And so just, um, I know when I hopped on, we tailored the, it to my needs and that we can, you know, tailor the, the detox, the 30 day to just about anybody's needs, but how would we deal with the cherry part of it, I guess? And I don't know if that's a question for the group or a question for later, but those are my two questions. Yeah, Mary, I, I, do you want me to answer or do you ladies want to answer if, she, if she's going to be seeking support with you guys? Um, we can definitely alter it. We can definitely, um, you don't have to do the cherry part. And uh, what, I, what I love in this journey is a lot of times allergies actually fade away at cert, one point in the journey. Um, once you start to get that lymphatic system cleansed, um, your body becomes back to that neutral state and isn't triggered by certain things oftentimes. So yes, for her first go round, we would tailor it to make sure that she's getting all her needs um, met as where she's at right now. And then, you know, as we continue the journey, there's some amazing aha moments that might happen where she may be able to start incorporating cherries back in her life at some point. I've seen it happen many a time. So yeah. I've seen it happen many times too. And the interesting thing about cherries is that they're one of the top cleansers for the kidneys to get them filtering again. So um, she could just be having a response where this lymphatic congestion that's been stuck for a long time is actually coming to the surface. So what we're doing in this cleanse is any chronic suppressions um, we're bringing to the surface to be eliminated. So people will experience detox symptoms that will help them through um, as they go. And there's ways to really ease that. Um, but we do want these eliminate this elimination to happen as well. So it'll just be great to chat with her um, deeper. Okay. And any comment about the nightshades? Um, is it or is that just kind of extend into the nightshades? Yeah. Because it's considered an allergen. I can chat a tiny bit about nightshades. Um, I mean, nightshades, generally speaking, if you have a really sensitive gut, you'll be a little more sensitive to nightshades. Um, so just like there's a lot of actually research happening right now that's saying that like celiac disease is not as big as we think. It's actually more glyphosate disease um, right. because the wheat is sprayed with so much glyphosate. And so that, um, and that experience is true for me. I've had celiac for years and wheat will put me into, or gluten, any of it, will put me into a flare where I'm broken out in rashes and hives, head to toe, distended belly. And I feel like I have to sleep for three days. Like I just like cannot come out of it. So I am so careful when I go out. I'm like, I tell, like, I'm like, I'm a hundred percent grain gluten-free, you know, like I'm always so meticulous about it. And after started the biomedic, which removes glyphosate out of your body and remineralizes your gut biome, 
Um, I was in um, Mexico with my husband in Playa. We went to this amazing high-end organic vegan restaurant and had this incredible meal and we asked for the vegan gluten-free version of it. And I had a bite and I said, there's no way that's gluten-free. And my husband said, well, you'll know in two minutes, you're gonna be covered in a rash from head to toe. And then we, I flagged down the server and I was like, hey, I just wanted to make sure this was gluten-free. And she went, oh my God, I totally forgot to stop eating that. And she like panicked. I was like, no problem. And I was like, great, here goes three days of my vacation. Mm-hmm. And um, that's that. And nothing happened to me. I didn't break out. I didn't get a distended belly. Like nothing happened. And I was like, what in the world? Why didn't I react to gluten like that? It's affected me for decades like that. And I really contributed to the biomedic had healed my gut and I'd removed the glyphosate out of my body. And so I was not having that same inflammatory reaction. And I used to also be sensitive to nightshades and now I can eat them. So nightshades, generally speaking, the reason why is like the outer portion of their skin is designed to be a defense mechanism to pests. So like things with tomatoes, you want to make sure you're eating them when they're really ripe, when they're really juicy red and almost like kind of look like they're going to get a little um, wrinkly. The pectin in them reduces and then your gut biome can handle it and it's no problem. Um, In eggplants, I just peel off the skin, that casing, right? So there's just so many things that you can do, but as your gut heals and as your gut strengthens, you won't be sensitive to nightshades anymore. I hope that's helpful. Does that answer? It is. And um, if nobody has another, I just have one more question. My husband um, is, his seasonal allergies are extreme, especially right now. And so um, we were talking to a friend um, locally, Lindsay from, um, uh, Anyways, our friend Lindsay, and she said that, um, you know, usually it's a, it's an allergy. It's a food allergy and he's, and he's pretty good about stuff, but he's like, I don't understand. Why would I get allergies the same time every year if it was a food allergy? And so just to, um, and I, I understand that it's just heightened in a reaction, but um, I just don't have the language to explain to him what is happening. It's he's convinced it's just the trees. And it couldn't possibly be anything in the food. And he's pretty good. He does gluten, doesn't do gluten. He's not doing dairy. He does a plant-based um, uh, uh, diet. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. And um, so it's a bit of a puzzle to him. And I'm not sure how to explain that. Yeah, I know Carrie Tidwell can talk a little bit more on that because it's like one of her examples that she gave. But really... Um, even if you're eating, so if you're eating a non-inflammatory diet, but that means fully, that means are we not eating processed foods? Are we not eating soy? Are we not eating corn? Um, Are we eating corn chips, corn tortillas? Like these are all things that are inflammatory. And so when that season comes where ragweed's out or certain trees are blooming and you have a congested lymphatic system, you're going to respond to that environment. And so really in order to get those allergies out, it's not good. It's going to be deeper than just needing to go plant-based. You're going to actually need to come in and clean out the mucus in your body, get your kidneys filtering, get the lymphatic waste cleaned out so that when inflammatories come in like ragweed or pollen or cotton or whatever it is that your body can combat it and deal with it with no problem. So then it's not going to be, um, an issue anymore. So I don't know, care if you want to share something else on that. Yeah, I can. Um, most people have never taken the time to cleanse their body. And so like Mary Beth was saying, each generation, we pass down our strengths and our weaknesses to our kids. We are connected to our mom's lymphatic system. So if her kidneys weren't filtering, we get that lymph, we already start out with kind of that compromised lymphatic congestion. And then if our mom is nursing, but eating these high acidic foods, we kind of get that. And I, can clearly say that because when I would eat, eat, go off and eat something different, I was nursing my son, he had a reaction. And so I, I connected the dots, like even more specifically, um, he's almost two now. And when I had my daughter, she was, she's 13 now, but I didn't have this information and awareness and she had baby acne. She had all this stuff I didn't understand. And I was nursing her what, why this was happening through my mouth. And so now I connected those dots. And so if somebody has never, ever done a cleanse, um, then that's why it's they've never gotten the waste out so it doesn't matter how healthy you can eat like carrie said when i met her she was thought she was eating super healthy health helping people with health but she'd never thoroughly like 
thoroughly cleanse. And a lot of people talk about detox cleanse. these like three day or two week, but it's like it to regenerate and heal. You, you want to go into a deeper level. And that's why the beauty of this 30 day is we can meet him where he's at and take it step by step. And it'll be um, amazing. The results he'll get just by over a 30 day period. And then he can take it beyond that if he wants to, but um, it's really, really important to get these, this waste congestion out. And then, you will he wouldn't have that. Cause I started to get adult allergies and I, I can't remember the last time I got sick or that I don't have that. I don't lose my voice anymore. I used to lose my voice every year and that doesn't happen anymore. Um, so yeah, you'll, I can literally turn on and off the inflammation in my body and the mucus by what I eat. And I have that awareness now. And I, we want that awareness for everyone on this call is to like really be in touch with your body. So that way, you know, what makes you feel best and you know, what causes harm. And then you can play with it. Like if you want to have a piece, piece of cake one day, then you know the next day to clean it out. So it's not what you do the odd day. It's what you do every day, but it's first, the, the most helpful thing is to de- get the waste out and, and then balance out. And then you can, you know, enjoy life in a balanced way. Um, something you just said reminded me of a fourth question. I'm so sorry. Um, perimenopausal and postmenopausal is the 30 day, the best, um, way to support. I, I was really sick and I actually went through menopause while I was sick. So I didn't notice I was menopausal and now I'm having postmenopausal symptoms and they're uh, more mild than maybe what a perimenopause would be. But, um, is the 30 day just a good, good thing to be on? Or, uh, you know, I, I did talk to Rita and Mary Beth about this. They suggested some other things to add in, but, um, I have other friends who are going through this. And so, um, yeah, some of them want to go on the patch and, and things like this. And, and I just really believe that supporting ourselves into a natural transition, but people are really scared of that. Does that make sense of just like, oh my God, you know, I need to add the estrogen back in when that's not really naturally where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Our so, body be can that. you talk to that just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Our body should be doing that in a, in a natural way. And actually if we're having those symptoms, it's a sign that things are out of balance and, and doing this will help bring things back into balance. And then working with um, Rita and Mary Beth with more specifics can be really helpful, but just like our menstrual cycle, if we have heavy menstrual cycle or, or bad cramps. I grew up with that. And that's not normal. It's just becomes common because a lot of people are, are eating the high acidic diets and, and all this stuff. So it, when we have the menopausal symptoms and the PMS symptoms, th- th- those are all just signs to bring us back into coming in internally, getting back into balance in nature and cleansing our body. And then that, should, that shouldn't happen. And if that is happening, it's just a sign you need to go internally and and it's not just about eating it's about you know our thoughts and we talk about all that in the in the 30 day but it's it's a lot more than just the food we eat it's the chemistry of all on all levels that we are ingesting um but yes that it can be really helpful for them um because it isn't normal and a lot of people in other countries don't have the struggles that we have with the menopause and they're eating more in alignment with nature great Thanks for accommodating me all those questions, ladies. Questions. Barry, I just wanted to address something you wrote in the comments. So you guys, the reason we do the 30 day is just because it's a great place to start. Like it's just a kind of a meeting ground for all of us, no matter what symptoms you're having or where you're coming from. It's a really great place to start, especially if you've never really dabbled in detox or cleansing. It's just like the beginning. And then again, we can always get more specific and detailed and individualistic to each person, but it really is just a great place to start. And there, Terry wrote in here, can you mention the difference between regular supplements and whole food supplements? So yes, there's a huge difference between a lot of the vitamins and supplements you consume in the health food store versus eating food in its whole food or dehydrated whole food plant form. Um, the reason being is uh, and the same thing in the pharmaceutical world is they, we isolate things. So they'll take a plant and then they'll isolate certain vitamins or minerals out of it. But this idea of holistic nutrition is everything is in that little bundle for a reason because it all works together synergistically. And so when you take one component and you isolate it into a vitamin or a supplement, it doesn't all of a sudden have all these other components it needed to, to be able to 
um, absorb in the body or assimilate in the body. For instance, if you just take an iron supplement, but you're not getting ample vitamin C, your body cannot absorb iron. So when you're, when you're eating a whole food, all these vitamins and minerals are mixed in together to make sure that your body is assimilating and absorbing and the chemistry is working properly. So that's why we take a standpoint of really whole foods um, versus, you know, very isolated vitamin supplemental pharmaceutical path um, because we really want to give this holistic, we want to give our body the whole picture versus just like very uh, linear, if that makes sense. Awesome. And the last thing I'll say about, you know, estrogen is a more acidic hormone. And so if your body's balance is more on the acid side of the fence, you can expect to have crazy menopause symptoms, peri and post. You'll have night sweats, you'll have hot flashes like crazy. And when your endocrine system, which is determined by your gut health, your hormone system and your gut health, is balanced and your body is alkaline, you'll have minimal to no symptoms. And Carrie and I both work in Arvigo Maya abdominal therapy. And one of the things that we learned is more than 15 minutes of discomfort before a period is abnormal and more than three tablespoons of blood. Um, so that is something to like take note of that that's all about the alkalinity of our body. We should not be suffering as women bleeding on the bathroom floor and having just like, we're taken out for two days, you know, where people are like, oh, it's my period, I can't that day. And I'm like, gosh, so many women suffer through their period. And it does not have to be that way. That's all about the acidity of your body. If your body's extremely acidic, it will shed and shed and shed and shed that waste. And that's the sign of your lymphatic health because the blood is too acidic to be reabsorbed into the system. And so um, the more alkaline you get, the easier your life gets, period. Like you'll feel great, your periods will be light. Menopause is no big deal. If someone's sick around you, it's no big thing. Like, I mean, I just said to my husband with this coronavirus, we have been all over the world and this has been going on for months. We just are now aware of it. Like Rita and I were in Bali and Lombok, Indonesia and Malaysia and I was in Thailand and I was pregnant this whole time. I'm pregnant right now, which is technically an immune compromised state. Um, then I was in Jamaica. I was in California. I was in Cuba. I was in Newark. I was in New York on a layover. Like, and then I was just in Hawaii for a month and I've been on planes, trains, you name it, boats and not knock on wood, but not once have I been compromised by something. And so I really attribute that or test that to my health and to my immune function because my son has, was sick for all of January. Like, and he eats like crap. He's 17. I can't, you know, he, he eats great in my home. And when he's not in my home, he doesn't eat great. And, and that's, there's nothing I can do. I can lead with love. I can lead with empowerment. I can lead with knowledge and you let the rest go. But he had this like heavy mucus chest cough. I'm like, I think he had it in January. And I was, it was in my home. I was exposed to it. Not once did I get something. And it's not that the bacteria didn't get to my mouth. For sure it did. We're sharing spoons. We had fam big family dinners together. We do tons of stuff together. And it's just that my system just takes care of it. So you are the one that's in control of your destiny, whether you experience dis-ease or a virus or a cold. And like Carrie said, we don't want to suppress those symptoms. A fever is your body's way of burning bacteria. It's a good thing. As long as you don't get too high, which is 104 or 105 for children. And so the fever is just saying, hey, the bacteria levels are too high in here. I'm going to bring on a fever and I'm going to kill this stuff. And that's what your body is doing. When you get a cold, when you have mucus, when you have draining, that is all the body saying like, okay, I have snot coming out. Like this is all this mucus has to come out. I'm too congested. When you get a deep lung infection, it's because your lungs actually start to act like spongy tissue and pick up um, mucus out of the body and expectorate it through a cough. So these are all good things that are happening. We don't wanna suppress that or we're suppressing the virus or the bacteria deeper into our lymphatic system. So that's a lot of information, but just understanding that. And I have clients coming in here in just a moment. So um, I'll let you ladies kind of stay on. And if you have any more questions or if, you're, if anybody doesn't have any more burning questions, we'll wrap up.
Yes, let's see. Anybody else? Rita, anybody want to say anything before they go? I was going to say thanks, everyone, for taking the time to learn this information. I hope that it was helpful and that you got something out of it that you can start taking and applying right away and sharing it with those around you. And taking really good care of yourself really helps um, those around you and, and I believe the world. So mm -hmm. whoop, the whole staff video, it says. I don't know what that means. Oh. So anyhow, I just wanted to say, and hopefully you can still hear me, that thank you for all being here and taking this time. And yeah, get back to, with the person who invited you here to get more information if you're wanting more support. Mm -hmm. And if you can go on Facebook, um, like the event or whatever, you can also just reach out to Carrie, Carrie Reader, or myself. We're all on Facebook and Instagram and whatever. So there's ways to get in touch with us. And thank you guys for taking your time. And um, it was really great to be here with you all this morning. And I look forward to more of these to come. Yeah, thank Yay. you so much. Rita, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Carrie. I was just going to say thank you, everyone. It's so nice to connect. And thank you, Carrie, Carrie, Mary, just for sharing your amazing information. And this is our passion. So we'll be doing a lot more deep dives. And I hope you can join us for the 30-day transformation to just let this information sink in at a cellular level through your own experience. Mm -hmm. All right. We love you all so much. We'll hope to see you again. And we'll advertise on Instagram and on Facebook for our next deep dive class and it will be capped at 100. All right. Thanks Bye, so much, everyone. Thank Bye. you.